Good morning guys, uh, we are on the way to the practice and that's how the usual day was starting for me. So uh, wake up, getting ready, uh, breakfast and then going to the practice. And obviously before practice I'll do the warm up as well. And uh, you know now it's just interesting to see all those uh, memories from the past because uh, that's how my day was, was practicing, going to lunch, practicing again. And now I'm doing this and it just reminds me from those past memories. And also, uh, if you haven't watched the vlog from Marbella about our lifestyle, how it was here, make sure to check the link below. And also, if you haven't seen my tennis video, because this is particularly in tennis, the vlog, if you haven't seen the one from St. Petersburg, make sure to check it out, because it's also pretty inspiring, because it was from there. And in Spain, why Spain? Because I spent a lot of time here training, because Spain has the best schools, the best players, coaches, and also the facilities so you can uh, find the court pretty easily and always you have the best uh, you know competitive players you have a lot of competition here which I was also playing and this is just great because you know it helped me so much also the weather conditions like it's literally every day is sunny especially in the summer like it's very hot sunny and throughout the year it's also very good weather so now it's just uh, good memories from the past but before of course that's how my usual routine was Alright, so we are at the Point Romano Tennis Club. So here I used to train a lot and also doing the preseason training with physical preparation. So you can see here on those courts, we're always doing like a preparation for actual training, like with a medicine ball, or like doing some movements, just basically to get warm up to make sure there's no injuries or anything like that. So a lot of good memories. When I'm coming here now and looking at all of this, we also played a paddle here. So. Uh, and obviously here you can see those all the courts, they have a lot of courts and uh, you know just good memories because now I'm going to have a training with Alesh. I used to train with him before a lot and uh, you know it's just going to be a good memories. We're also going to start playing, we'll see how it goes and then I'm going to have an interview with him as well. And uh, you know big facility here and I used to always come before, uh, we're doing warm up there, running around as well so now when I come here, it feels the same kind of feeling that I'm playing competitively as before. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, interesting interview and also we're going to enjoy some time here. So I'm glad that I came to Puente Romano because I had a, a big uh, story, big journey here with Alish Dvorak. He was uh, training me uh, for a few years here and we were preparing for tournaments, doing the preseason. And uh, actually before uh, I went to US to the academy, we had also we were doing the videos and uh, Ivan Lendl, he actually saw that video on the hardcore. So a lot of story, Alish, thank you so much for uh, training, we've been training for a few days, pretty intense, and uh, thank you for also doing this interview. Yeah, so uh, let's start, first question to you, uh, can you just maybe share your story from, you know, how we met and how it's all started? Well, if uh, I remember well, um, your father came to the club because he was looking for the place to make training for you yeah. and you came with him so then we started to work together first first week and yeah. it was good good feeling it was yeah. good workout 
So uh, we did continue the uh, playing and training yeah. and uh, we made quite a good uh, schedule, if I remember. Yeah. We had yeah. a good discipline, everything yeah. was going fantastic and um, this is, uh, I think, yeah. the beginning. Yeah, you, you helped me a lot with uh, the style of the game. I was playing maybe too much far back, not like less aggressive and you help to transition that so yeah to to be more competitive yeah. to tr yeah. be more aggressive yeah not just being the base line player uh, <laughs> waiting for the mistake <laughs> of your opponent yeah yeah so trying to be more to create the game yeah and uh, we yeah. worked on the discipline as well yeah. as you remember seen uh, from the past sometimes my focus Oh yeah, discipline very important to be on time on the court, uh, do your warm up, stretching, and then you had your physical uh, preparation plan. You've been following. It was very good. Yeah, it was very good. And I think that was a good uh, um, learning because then you decided to go to United States to study, yeah. and yeah. then you've been playing there for the university. Mm -hmm. team on the hard court I guess all the yeah, mostly all, all the time yeah all so time. that was even more important to be uh, aggressive player on yeah, the hard court sure. you have to be yeah? yeah so it was a good base and but what about like tennis here in Spain like Spain obviously considers as number one tennis uh, in the whole world best academies why, why is that well it's because probably of the weather conditions <laughs> because uh, you have uh, many many courts you don't need uh, indoor courts so you have uh, the possibility to play all year around without any winter break, mm -hmm. which is a big advantage. Everyone from all Europe can to practice to Spain and play in December and January, which is uh, difficult in the other countries like in uh, Germany or Czech Republic. You or have in to, Russia. <laughs> or in Russia, you have to uh, book the uh, indoor courts yeah. very far in advance and you you just uh, it's very limited and difficult I remember people playing in my country at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> and uh, one o'clock in, in the night yeah. because there is no other hours available plus it's much more expensive yeah, so true. that's basically the reason it's true in uh, Russia is the same like we had to play either early in the morning or late in the evening because they had all these like players who are just playing for fun people and it's you have to it's always very expensive because there's a limited number of courts. Also, the game, right? The style of the game is a little bit like in Spanish school. They teach, uh, uh, you know, more of a different game style. What do you think? Uh, yes, they do, and also uh, it's a lot of uh, game on the clay court, and you learn much more to be a tennis player on the clay court than on the hard court because on the hard court everything uh, uh, happens very quickly. You have no time you don't need to be patient and on the clay court you have to create the game you have to sing that it's a long rallies and that's a good base for to make then the transfer to the hard court for instance yeah. because you you know how to play the points much better yeah also what about the competition in spain it's also pretty high right they have a lot of tournaments uh, a lot of tournaments but the, that co goes together with a lot of people playing and a lot of a uh, lot of tennis so yeah. then you have more, the base is much wider, yeah? So then yeah. you have more. Yeah. yeah, they are like national level, even if you play like those. We, I think even we played together, this tournament doubles. Oh it yeah. It was, was very competitive. Yeah. It was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, good competition and it was very hard. You know, the level was really good, even yeah. though it was a national level. Yeah, so. the national level is very high yeah. because many uh, professionals, uh, when they are out of the tournament, they go and practice in some national tournament. Yeah. So that's national tournaments are very good level. In Russia it's a little bit different. We don't have that a strong like usually or like top players they don't play national so it's more for younger, really young even though like if it's a men's tournament you would see a lot of young people mm -hmm. but here is uh, is different. All right, so here, when we used to practice, I always put my camera here because I was uh, also love filming and we're putting this on YouTube all the time. And, uh, you know, as you can see here, that was the camera spot. I actually use my iPhone all the time and put it on the tripod here. 
and uh, I used to film matches, we used to film different drills we were doing with Alish, he was doing like the exercise where I'll hit the ball on the right and come to the net and uh, when we had the match we were also recording the match because afterwards we were sitting up there at the terrace and we were looking at the match, you know, trying to make analyze, better improve and uh, then like this you can improve much more better because when you're seeing yourself from the camera, uh, from the video, you can analyze the strokes or anything like that much better. So that's what we did. We also did some other tests with the camera, but this was a great spot because you can see the tennis court is from the bottom. It's here up high, so it's very good location for that, for filming. And of course now we have the drone as well. So the drone is just amazing that you can put it up there and you can film the entire court, the entire movement. So it was a very good, it was like six years ago, imagine, and now you have this technology. So everything just in the incredible, how it's going so fast. So what about, uh, so I stopped playing tennis for like uh, almost a year, pretty much a year. What do you think, you know, for what should be the goal, maybe for me or maybe for other people, like if you're working and you still have this background of tennis, like should you consider to still play? Like what should be the goal? Absolutely. For, for example, me. Absolutely. If you have a desire and motivation to play, you have to make your plan and play uh, of course, uh, depending the possibilities of time you have, but you should uh, play the tournament when you can play. And this way you keep your physical condition as well. Maybe you can, everyone has to do some physical preparation, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, also you play when you can to play. You make your license and uh, you have time to play the tournament. It, it fits in time, so go and do it, play, of yeah. course. You never know because it might, you know, work out and I might, I don't know, achieve good results because obviously spent so many years and, you know, money and the help of the parents and, you know, all the academies playing. So it's just a shame to say like goodbye to all that stuff. Oh, right? Of course. And, and uh, uh, perfect condition doesn't exist. Yeah. So you cannot wait again and pretend to have the perfect situation to start to play again. Yeah. You, ha you do what's possible in, in, your, uh, in your time and you just do it. Yeah, because that, like we talked before, you said like it's just not good to wait for some time because there's no perfect time. Exactly. We always have like some things going on, so we just have to, if you want to do it, we have to like fit it in the schedule and just readjust. Exactly, because if you will wait for the perfect moment, it will never happen. Yeah, yeah. And you will not play. Yeah, so I mean, I will definitely try to, you know, reconsider and you know readjust because I always enjoy even though we've been training for a few days and that feeling when I was playing before and when I'm playing now it's still the same because you know when you play the point obviously the motivation the you know the hard work you still have it on the court so I think it's even helps in business for example like you're doing the sport you're doing this sports career and then when you go in business and you're much more you know like you solve the problems more efficiently your head is working so it's, it's also good for, I think, just to have like, you know. Of course, if you have a good physical condition, your brain is working much better. Yeah. So it's more efficient. Yeah. 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 You, you, you better in the business, whatever you do, if you have a good physical yeah. condition. So what is, uh, for example, for you, the goal? So you're training here, Point Roman, right? I know you've been also playing uh, like competitively uh -huh. for your age, for what is also your goal? My motivation is probably exactly the same as yours, because when you teach, 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 you lose a little bit uh, the motivation. So I decided to play some matches. I play for the team in our club in Puente Romano here. Uh, we travel to the other places, other countries and the other teams, they come to. It's friendly, but it's very competitive as well. Yeah. 
uh, the other teams they come to other uh, to our club to play and now I found the team in Germany I play for the team in Germany the German league so that gives me uh, big motivation also I play some matches uh, in the club with the people uh, occasionally uh, and this is that makes me then teach better yeah, I think and I think any person which uh, uh, does something like that will be better in in their job then yeah I think it's good also when you travel you meet other people and that you can help with the network so you can you know make new connections right and then this could bring to something more absolutely tennis itself is the is the business uh, or activity where you meet the most uh, people from all the world yeah you meet I met so many people from such a different countries and if you travel and play uh, in other places you know more and more people and you can always make the connections yeah i think that's even for me like when i go to some conferences to speak i also meet a lot of people and that will help afterwards people will watch our vlogs or buy some service from us so it helps us and especially like you said when you travel with the team you meet other people who are you know, maybe in the same mindset even now you just made the introduction to the person it's just i think one contact could be could change the your entire yeah, it can open the doors yeah. to a totally different direction you never had the idea about. Yeah. 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 So, Alex, thank you so much for uh, doing the vlog, for doing thank the you. interview, you thank know, uh, was a for, for training. So hopefully I'll come more often and I plan to come this summer. So obviously we, if we train more, probably we'll do more vlogs and more stuff like that. So thank you so much and let's get to another practice tomorrow. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much guys, uh, it was an amazing day, a lot of memories, obviously when I used to train more that day was, uh, at the end of the day I was just totally dead, so now I'm gonna go back home, uh, hope you enjoyed it, a lot of trainings, a very intensive schedule as well, and uh, I'm gonna definitely keep training because that's gonna help me with uh, the business, that's gonna help me with staying in, shape, in, uh, in a good shape. And also, if I'm gonna play some tournament, that's just gonna help me for more networking possibilities and more connections. So guys, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think and see you soon.